Hey, welcome to Mountain Cooking with Missy. Look here, what we're gonna make today. Look at that. That is a Kentucky blackberry jam cake, y'all. And I got a feller here that's chomping at the bits to be able to take a taste of this. He's over here waiting. Yeah, I am patient. <laughs> and, impatient. Yeah, and this is gonna be a good one, y'all. So, Kentucky blackberry jam cake. Hey everybody, how's my mountain friends? Hope y'all having a great day. Are y'all ready for some Kentucky blackberry jam cake? Uh, this is part of the 12 cakes of Christmas that I've been uh, bringing to you all. Uh, and I know it's a, almost Thanksgiving time. Next week will be Thanksgiving. But uh, you can make this now for Thanksgiving, but it's uh, part of the 12 cakes of Christmas that I've been bringing to you guys. And so this is an old timey, old fashioned cake. Um, and it's called a Kentucky Blackberry uh, Jam Cake. And I I grew up in the mountains of Southeast Kentucky. We had a lot of blackberries growing up. We picked them in the summer, put them up in the freezer and ate them all winter. Blackberry dumplings, uh, blackberry jam cake, uh, you name it. Uh, we would, uh, blackberry cobbler, uh, my mamas and my aunts and my mother would always use blackberries. So this is a good cake uh, that is one just, uh, it's going to be a hit at your holiday table, guys. You got to try it. If you've never had it, it's a kind of like a spice cake with some blackberries in it. And it's got a caramel frosting on it that you just pour on top of it. And I'm going to make it in a bunt pan today. So I've already got my bunt pan sprayed ahead of time. I use Baker's Joy for it, uh, for this. So if you don't want to use a bunt pan, you can use two nine inch, uh, uh, round pans and that will do just as fine, but I'm going to use mine. I'm going to bake it in a bunt pan because when we were growing up, uh, like my mama would make a lot of cakes mostly in her bunt pan or a tube pan. So I'm going to tell you what's in this right ahead. You can write it down, and, but I will be dropping a recipe in the comments so you all can check it out. Uh, it's a cup of butter. So that's two sticks of butter. It needs to be room temperature. Um, Two cups of sugar, three eggs at room temperature, a cup of buttermilk at room temperature, um, a teaspoon of baking soda, a cup of blackberry jam. You can use seedless, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want. Three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a, a teaspoon of cloves, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of allspice, and a cup of chopped nuts toasted. I toasted mine. You can use pecans or walnuts. And for the caramel frosting, you're gonna need 10 tablespoons of salted butter. Anytime you're doing like a caramel type frosting or a brown butter frosting or anything like a butterscotch caramel type um, frosting or recipe, salted butter just seems to complement it better, makes it taste a lot better. So you'll need 10 tablespoons of softened salted butter for the frosting. And you need uh, one and a quarter cups of brown sugar packed, okay? And you're gonna need a half cup plus a tablespoon of milk for the frosting and two and a half cups of powdered sugar. And uh, you can save back a little bit of your nuts instead of putting all these in your batter. Save back a little bit of them to garnish on top of your cake and make it look pretty and all. So, all right, so let's get started. All right, so in my mixer is my two sticks of unsalted butter for my cake, uh, and it's room temperature. You know, you need to make sure it is. It's so much easier to deal with. And I'm gonna cream the butter and the sugar. So I put my sugar in. And I'm just gonna let that cream together for a couple minutes. So I've creamed my sugar and my butter and I scraped the bottom. And I'm gonna add in my blackberry jam. And we'll let that come together, give it a couple minutes. So I just added my eggs in one at a time. I thought my video was on and it wasn't. Uh, so the eggs got added into the blackberry butter and sugar mixture and I'm going to scrape the sides down. So 
So now it's time to put our flour in with our buttermilk. So what I do, I put it on low and start putting my flour in. I already put my cinnamon, my baking soda, my allspice, and my um, cloves already in with my flour here. So you want to put it in in about thirds and I'm going to start drizzling in the buttermilk. Here's the buttermilk. Drizzle that in. And I'm just going to repeat that until it's all done. So the last of the flour has went in. And here's the last of the buttermilk. Y'all, my mixer's old. <laughs> I'm going to let that mix. I'm going to scrape the bowl. Now look at that. That batter is going to be a really thick, rich batter. So now the last step is you're going to put the nuts in last. And I also coated the nuts a little bit with some flour because that helps, um, that helps the nuts not to sink to the bottom. And so coat them a little bit with some flour. I'm just going to sprinkle them in just until they're mixed in. You don't want to over mix the cake. All right, cake is ready to put in the pan. Uh, I just want to tell you, you may need to have your oven preheated at 350. Okay, now this cake will bake about 30, 40 minutes. Keep an eye on it. Don't let it overbake. Um, check it after about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, put your toothpick down the middle. If it comes out clean, get it out. If not, just give it a few more minutes. But yeah, I sprayed mine, um, this pan really well with some Baker's Joy and a bump pan. You gotta make sure you spray it really good. And this is an old pan that I've had for years. Uh, believe it or not, I believe I got this at the Goodwill. <laughs> Mom always did find me pans at the Goodwill. So a lot of my stuff has come from the Goodwill through the years. So, hey, as long as it works and I like it. Uh, now this batter is really thick and rich and it looks so good. It almost looks like a light chocolate color, but it's got like a really purple uh, color to it. and. I can't wait to eat it. I did lick a little bit of the batter and it's good. Now, I just wanted to say, some people, uh, a, a Kentucky gem cake, um, a lot of the old recipes do call for a cup of raisins. Uh, if you want to put a cup of raisins in it, do the same. Put some flour on the raisins. Put them in when you put the nuts in. Um, I'm leaving them out because I don't care for raisins. So... To me, it doesn't have to have raisins, but if you want to put raisins in it, a lot of the old recipes, uh, original recipes called for raisins. So you can do that. And um, so I'm just going to pour this in really carefully and get it all in there. And this is going to be a really good dense cake. And that caramel frosting, y'all just, makes it so good brings back a lot of memories from eating at uh church dinners and homecoming dinners now i grew up uh, a lot of times during the summer they would do homecoming dinners on graveyards i grew up in the mountains of southeast kentucky where they did that a lot so my mommy's my mom's uh, people on her daddy's side were from Clay County, Kentucky. And every year, um, my mother's aunts, it was my mom's dad's sisters, um, they could cook. I'm telling you, they were some of the finest cooks, some of the best food I ever had. Now, you wanna shake your pan down and get you a knife. So anyway, 
um, they would do their homecoming dinners. I kind of just spread it down. They would do their homecoming dinners on a graveyard, on their family graveyard. And they'd have like service, like church service. And then they would have the homecoming dinners on the grounds, usually on the graveyard or uh, nearby. We would go, my aunt, my mom had an aunt named M. Her name was Emily, they called her M. And um, we'd go to her house because it wasn't too far from the graveyard. They lived up in a holler called Ulysses Creek. They call it Useless Creek. And the, uh, the, the cemetery there was where like all of my mom's like great, her great papa and grandma and all of them was all buried there. So they would have dinner there and you all tap it down and they would make the best stuff there was. And I remember eating this cake at them homecoming dinners. So if y'all remember them dinners on the ground and homecoming dinners or having them on graveyards, they did when I was growing up. And so that's some of the best cooking that I've ever, that I ever remember having and all that I grew up on was just eating food like that. And it was so good. So you wanna tap it down. I, I did spread it out. You wanna do that. And it's ready to go in the oven. So the oven's already preheated at 350. And we'll get started on the frosting part. All right, y'all. I just wanna talk a few minutes while the cake is baking about uh, Willie Brooks Farms. Um, I talk about their honey. They have the best honey, organic honey that uh, I've ever had. I bake a lot and y'all know that and I use a lot of their honey. And you've seen some of my videos talking about how their honey is just amazing. The sourwood honey is one of the most sought after honeys in the world because it's only found in the Appalachian Mountains. That makes me proud because I'm an Appalachian girl. I'm from the mountains of Southeast Kentucky, which is part of the Appalachian Mountains. Now the, they, uh, Kathy and Jeffrey Garrett out of Blowing Rock, North Carolina. They harvest this honey right in their backyard. It's all organic. And uh, she is just a little jack of all trades. They have a restaurant there called Willie Brooks Farm, uh, Willie Brooks Barbecue. That's in Boone, North Carolina. They have some amazing cakes, amazing barbecue. We were blessed to be able to go eat there uh, back in October. And I'll tell you, I'm telling you, we didn't walk away hungry. And, but their honey is amazing. And uh, the sour wood tastes like a caramel. I've never tasted a honey that tastes like that. And like I said, it's very highly sought after. They have a mountain wildflower honey. They have a foothills wildflower honey, and it's a little lighter, but these make awesome gifts. But I also wanna just tell y'all, they have some amazing other products besides honey. Uh, I love their lotion bar. I put my fingers and my hands in water a lot. They have a lotion bar that I just love to, you just take it and just use it right on your hands instead of like squirting lotion out. I just take this uh, usually a couple times during the day, especially at night before I go to bed, and I just rub that right on my hands and it's, it has prevented my fingers from being cracked. Miss um, Kathy makes this stuff by hand and it's made with beeswax and honey, all organic. They have some amazing, they have, here's some lotion. This is really good for cracked heels. As you can see, I've been using it on my cracked heels. Uh, everybody's got cracked feet, y'all. Rough elbows, whatever. They even have some amazing lip balm. I love their lip balm. And I usually, I keep some in my purse. They have it also in a tube if you want it. But one of my favorites is the headache balm. And uh, I get a lot of headaches now and then, and just about everybody does, but I've always been prone to them a little bit more, and I can't get this one off because I got slick fingers, but the headache balm is great. It's got kind of a camphor uh, smell to it, and it is very good to just put on your temples, and I can honestly say when I feel my headache coming on, I keep this in my purse. I just put some on my fingers, rub it on my temples, a good natural way to alleviate uh, your headache into, I put some on my head at night before I go to bed too. It just seems like, just helps me be able to relax. But y'all go check out, these are awesome stock, uh, uh, stuffers, stocking stuffers, what I'm trying to say. Awesome stocking stuffers for Christmas. And I know, you know, everybody likes to have soft hands, not greasy. So just check them out. I am going to be putting a link in this caption of this video. 
I'll be also putting the, uh, I'll put the link also in the comments. But if you use my code, all capitals, in my SSY and the number 10, at checkout, you can get an extra 10% off. So just check them out. They're a great small business. Love their honey. Love their products. And Christmas time's coming up, so now the time's do it uh, to check them out. And I'll be dropping their uh, info for you guys. So now we're getting started on the caramel uh, icing. And this is uh, 10, the 10 tablespoons um, of salted butter that's been in here and it's um, already about ready to melt. And it helps when your butter is always room temperature. And I'm gonna add in my sugar. So this is brown sugar, a cup and a half of brown sugar, and you won't need it packed. So you're gonna stir this together when it comes until it starts to come to a bowl and you only want to stir it uh, you only want to keep it on the heat once it boils for about two minutes so this is boiling and I got it on about a medium heat you want to keep it low and you want to stir it constantly and just as soon as it starts to simmer and you see them little bubbles and when you want to time it two minutes is all it needs you don't want to do it no longer than that so now you want to add in your milk and I'm using whole milk you want to stir that and as soon as that gets stirred in you want to transfer this to a mixing bowl then we'll start adding in our powdered sugar. So I got that added to my mixer. I just stirred it a little more. So I'm gonna add, start adding in my powdered sugar. You're gonna add about two and a half cups of powdered sugar in this. So I'm gonna put my first cup in. One. Two and a half. Just let it mix and come together. It won't take it long. If it looks a little too thick, you can always add a little bit more whole milk to it. So I switched over to a whisk because I wanted to make sure my frosting got really smooth. Make sure you sift your powdered sugar too, especially for this kind of icing. You don't want lumps. So make sure you sift your powdered sugar. If it's still got some lumps on it, on it, just take it out, put it in a saucepan, put it right back on the stove and whisk, store it with a whisk on low heat and the lumps will dissolve. But in order to avoid that, just sift your powdered sugar. Now I'm doing a an ounce or not an ounce i'm using a teaspoon of bourbon in this frosting you can use vanilla if you want instead of bourbon or you can use a teaspoon of maple but the bourbon just gives it that really good flavor and it's only a teaspoon and it's a kentucky cake so <laughs> well it's a kentucky cake without a little bit of that so it's going to be so good y'all y'all the Kentucky jam cake is done and I take my one of these uh, knives here that I got like a it's like a cake decorating knife where I spread frosting on I like this to use better than anything when I'm going around the edges of my cake and you want to make sure you do that all around and in the center Go down real easy like, and uh, let this cake cool for about 10 minutes before flipping it out onto a wire rack or onto your pan, whatever you're gonna do. But that's how I loosen it up. 
And now I'm gonna flip it out. So the cake is cooled down where I can touch it. So what I do, uh, this is my bottom of my cake dome. And what I do is I put it like, I do it this way, flip it like that. And I heard it come off, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Because I'm always scared to death my cake's going to stick. So you just lift it straight up. And look at that. Perfect. Now, it's got to cool completely. It's still warm. Then we're going to put the icing on it. And it's just about done. All right. Now is time for the good part. <laughs> Putting the frosting on. Y'all, this is some... This is going to be like a, it's just more of an icing, I guess, than a frosting. But it's going to be fairly, um, like this right here, it's going to be fairly thin. If you want this frosting thicker, then you can just keep adding some more um, powdered sugar to it if you want it more like a thicker consistency. But this cake, uh, this is more like, I guess, I guess you could call it a glaze too, but you're just going to pour this right on the cake like this. And because it's a blunt style cake, it is going to run down. And I just kind of pour mine on like that right there. And if you want to do this over, um, over a rack, like if you got a wire rack where the excess uh, icing kind of goes down um, to the bottom where it won't look so messy, you can do that and then just move your cake back onto your platter before you serve it. But I'm gonna cover the whole cake like this. I'm just gonna keep spreading it on. And I'm gonna go all the way around with it. And when I get done, I'm gonna sprinkle the rest with my toasted pecans. Yes, I am. All right, look here. Who's ready to eat this <laughs> blackberry jam cake? I cut into it. Look at there in the middle, that icing comes out. Here, hand me you, hand me your plate a little bit, Daddy. Let's spoon you a little bit of this, a little bit more of this glaze on top. You need just a little bit. Oh, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm gonna spoon him some glaze, more of that glaze on there. Now he's got him a glass of milk. Yeah, I'm a milk drinker. <laughs> the girls ain't, but I am. I don't know where to start at, it. Thank you, Lord, for this cake. Mm. It's still warm. Still a little bit warm? Mm. <laughs> Good? That's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, buddy. That is. It's good. Look at that. Mm. That is a authentic <laughs> Kentucky blackberry cake. That is. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever had that. Yeah, he's never had this cake. I've had it a few times. Wow. But yeah, it's good. You did good, Ellie. That gotta be a hit for the holidays. Mm -hmm. mm. You could slice it up, chill it. It's mm -hmm. perfect for bake sales or anything. What's your favorite part? Eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Eating it. <laughs> so look at that. So when I cut into it, look at there, that glaze poured out. Mmm, look at that. Y'all, this is a good cake. I will tell you. Stuff. I took a bite myself. It is good. So there you go, y'all. Uh, Kentucky blackberry jam cake. <laughs> you, did. you did good. Knock that one out of the park. And... Hope y'all make it. If you do, let me know. I'll put the recipe in the comments mm. and check it out. And part of our 12 cakes of Christmas. So thank y'all for watching. Mountain Cook. That might should have been number one. <laughs> think it might be number one. I might like just for the others. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. That's... I forgot what number this is, but I've That's... made a few. It's good. So, <laughs> thank y'all for watching. Mountain Cooking with Missy, where it's nothing fancy. It's good eating. It's good eating. <laughs>